Um, now, as far as um, militarily, and I do have to say, if I have any MGT or FOI listening, I love you. You know I do. Um, we are not supposed to, quote unquote, carry weapons. Um, that does not necessarily mean that some of us do not choose to have weapons in our home. And even if you choose not to have weapons in your home, you should know how to use them. Um, if you have to take somebody's gun from them, you need to know how to take a gun from somebody and how to use it against them. I forget what mosque it was uh, that was under siege one day and somebody called the messenger and said, messenger, they shooting at us. What should we do? He said, shoot back. Salam alaikum. Click. Cleveland Mosque. Thank you, Brother David. Cleveland Mosque. Um, he says, shoot back. Salam alaikum. So we're not going to be spooky about this. We're going to get into it. Um, so I really want to get into the brothers on what guns you recommend for women. But also, um, you know, guns are not the only weapons. We have to be smart as women. Um, if you come into certain parts of my home, you might see some Asian things uh, sitting around and you might be like, oh, she cooning what she uh, all into Asian culture. No, I'm not. But if I cannot get to wherever one weapon might be, I might be able to reach behind me and get my Kill Bill sword and use that. I might be able to um, go somewhere and get a letter opener and use that. You should have things strategically placed around your home and you can even use that, as I said, in home decor, have a sword display on a wall um, or whatever so that you always have access to weapons if you need it where somebody may think it's decoration, it may be. It may not be, but only you will know what's real and what's fake. Um, so that's just something that I had thought of. Um, what guns would you well, guys everything, recommend? Everything around you is a weapon, Queen. Sure. And, 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 and to, to everybody listening, everybody, everything around your circumference is a weapon. It all depends on how you utilize it. That's it. Um, I did a self-defense training class in Philadelphia. And y'all probably seen it. The white man got upset about it, blew it all up all over the world, said I'm training kids how to uh, kill crackers and all that. But those kids he was talking about were my children sitting directly in the front of the training. But I had many varieties of weapons because the way I've been trained, again, everything around you is a weapon. So I, let, let me just give you a list of some of the weapons I had. A plastic coat hanger, uh, a ladle from the, you know, the, 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 the dipper. Uh, I had a fork, a butter knife, a stick, a bat, a machete, guns, <laughs> a bottle, you understand what I'm saying? A can opener, a newspaper. I had a rubber band. You understand? Know so every, but, and, and I'm shocked with it because I know how to utilize all of it. So everything around you is a weapon. Just understand that principle in battle. I'm just specializing in one specific weapon. But we need to specialize in every goddamn thing. Right. <laughs> you understand? Know and, and for those sellers, if you know you can't carry guns, hell, master the knife. Master uh, a broken bottle. You know what I'm saying? I mean, master some kind of technique, you know, to where you can utilize anything around you. That's right. Let me, let me just add on to that. Um, you got to understand that the, the, your first weapon and your best weapon is your mind. You need to think defensively at all times, especially mm -hmm. being, uh, especially for the sisters. Like you said, anything around you can be a weapon. Like, for instance, you know, you may be walking, maybe on your coffee break from the plantation, or you may be just walking to the grocery store. You notice somebody following you. If you if you if you think it defensively and your mind is on point, you start to notice things in your surroundings that you could possibly use as a weapon. I would suggest, like for instance, like somebody like me that that lives in the city, you walk down the block and you notice somebody's following you, walk up to the corner store, get a hot cup of tea, fifty cent, walk out. The moment he approaches, splash right in his eye. That gives you opportunity yeah. to run. He got scolding hot tea on his face, face balling, bubbling yeah. up now. You understand? Uh, another thing, sisters, get into the habit of when you walk in to and from your car or to and from your home, don't put your keys in your purse. Keep your keys in your hand. Put them in between your fingers, like, like almost like a dagger or a knife, like, you know what I mean? In case somebody run up on you unexpectedly because there are a lot of soft, fleshy areas in the face, in the neck that can be punctured easily with a key. Hit them in the eye, up under, up, all up 
in the neck. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of soft, fleshy parts of the body where you can puncture them and cause extreme pain. Because anything is a weapon, like the brother said. Carry pepper spray on you. You should have pepper spray on you. And get in the habit of when you're walking to and from your car, to and from your home, or anywhere out on the street, have it accessible, readily accessible, in your hand if possible. You understand? Have a pocket knife if you can't carry a gun. Have a pocket knife. Readily accessible. To carve a cracker up. I definitely agree with that for women in the nation who, you know, we're not even supposed to carry a pen knife, but you can carry a nail file. You know, you, you right. have all kinds of stuff in your purse that if you're creative and if your religion forbids certain things, there are ways around it in an emergency situation um, if you need them. And I think um, one thing that women can do also for um, security that a lot of us don't think about either because we didn't have a father or a man or whatever but a lot of this when you have a family is just basic respect and courtesy um, number one no matter who's there you don't let random people in your home um, that's one thing that my husband definitely stresses if you know somebody and you invite them over and they come over with a friend the friend gotta wait outside y'all know them the person can come in but the friend gotta wait you don't let random people into your home um, you don't let people see every area of your house. You don't let them roam. You have a place for them to sit. They have access to the restroom, but you don't just have free access where they can see the whole layout of your home. Um, when your husband is not there, you shouldn't be letting any man in your house unless it's like your, your father, your brother, your son, a very close family member. They shouldn't be in, in your home, period. And that's just basic male female respect kind of stuff but it also works for security because when you don't have that first line of defense there uh being your husband you really have to look out for yourself that way you won't even be in some of these situations that we're talking about that's right let's see uh, in regards to your, uh, your, your your last question about the firearms I, I i would say that um whatever a sister can handle because a bullet going the same place you know what i'm saying whatever you aim at is going to hit so whatever you can handle um is what you should carry. Um, but I, I also feel like, just like in uh, in, in regards to just hand-in-hand uh, -hand combat, you should be trained in all ranges of fighting. Uh, you should maybe you, you should know how to handle a shotgun. You should know how to handle a rifle. You should know how to handle a revolver. You should know how to handle a semi-automatic weapon. So try to train with whatever you can, but whatever you can handle is what you should carry. Yes, sir. I would say that... Uh, for those who never shot a firearm, start off small. That's right. Something like a thirty-eight or twenty-two. You know what I'm saying? Three eighty. Uh, the twenty-two is very useful because these bullets are very easy to carry. You can carry hundreds and thousands of them without really having too much weight on you. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you're out in the wilderness area, out you know down south. A twenty-two is very, very vital. And like the guy said, it all depends on where you're aiming at. It's going to hit him, but if you, if you look at his cracker straight in his eyeballs through your scope, that bullet is going through his eyeballs from your scope. You know what I'm saying? So it all depends on uh, what you, what you you know, like, like he said, what you are, are used to, because a lot of guns have different recoil power. 45s are very, very strong guns. Desert Eagles are very strong guns. And if you never shot a firearm before, I mean, it's just my opinion, but it's also a suggestion. Start off small. You can, you know, some getting used to busting a gun for, and then work your way up as you get. And naturally, it's going to happen anyway. You're going to work your way up as you go along because you're going to want to start bigger and, and bigger bullets for bigger crackers. You understand what I mean? Bigger crackers going to take bigger bullets. But you got to learn how to use the rifle, the shotgun, the AK, you know, semi -automatic, automatic weapons, automatic weapons. Yeah, I mean, well, this is on the horizon. We ain't scared of these Becker words. They have learned how to make Molotov cocktails and, you know, have different drills in these things. So it, it all depends on what you are able to handle. And, again, if you've never shot a firearm, start off small with proper training. Start off small and work your way up. That's right. And they even have cute guns now, too. I know King Samir always give me a hard time, but I saw some cute little pink and fuchsia guns the other day, 380s. I was like, oh, that's so cute. It'll coordinate with my outfit. I know men don't care about this kind of stuff, but I was excited over this. 
Because I got oh some pink Tim's. Hey, and it don't match. matter what color it is, the bullet is still going to hit that one color of the white man. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So you can coordinate. I got my pink Tim's. I'm going to have my pink 380, and it's just going to be a beautiful, beautiful thing. And, and shoot a crack. I'm going to put that bullet through some pink skin. That's right. <laughs> Yes, sir. Right, wow. Cracker in the trunk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Brother Bomani, I don't know if you listened to uh, Brother Irritated Genie's uh, show last night. We just adding on to it. Brother Jeff called in as a show about Jesus. He says, Serapis in the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't hear that. Serapis in the trunk. I like that one, too. Let's be the next one. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Um, did you guys have anything that you wanted to add on before we go to the phone lines? Uh, man, we'll be here all night, Queen. <laughs> uh, actually, actually, you know what? Yeah, let me let me just run down some things that uh, Sister Queen Jacira of the Warren Horizon Family, Africans Rex Music Family, she sent me an email uh, to yeah, just some some quick little tips, a little pointers that I thought was uh was valuable, some great information, some things to think about. So if you got a second, let me just run down this list. Oh, sure. Take your time. Uh, she said, one, sisters should uh, invest in some disguises, wigs, glasses, etc. If an act has to, be, has to be committed in the name of liberation, that allows you to change your appearance easily. Also, become knowledgeable with weapons training beyond guns. Guns ultimately will run out of bullets, so hand-to-hand -hand combat training and impoverished weaponry using typical household items and products, knowledge will provide... Uh, valuable, uh, it would be a valuable resource. Also, uh, she says, uh, invest and purchase the items necessary to put, the, to put together a survival bag. If you can, have two survival bags, one to keep in the car, one to keep at home. We also go on, she says, she also goes on frequent nature walks with an elder, and he teaches, teaches them how to spot uh, edible food that grows in the wild. So that's some things for to think about as well. Uh, take wilderness training. Also, uh, learn the art of concealment. Uh, secret compartments in your purse, leg straps to allow you to carry a weapon under a skirt, dress, razors under the tongue without cutting yourself, etc. Also, uh, this is something that you have to do with, with your mate as well, is uh, create a plan for your family. Uh, key secret words, evacuation routes, different plans for different circumstances. Example, uh, what would a plan be if things go down and the family is together versus what that plan will be if the family is in different places. Also, train in the dark. I think this is very important. Train in the dark. The enemy typically attacks under the cover of darkness. Know how to move around your house in the dark without bumping into anything. Know how to put bullets in the clip or assemble your weapon in the dark. That's very important. Besides going to the gun range, also become intimate enough with your weapon to know how to clean it, how to take it apart, and put it back together. I thought that was very valuable what she put. So I just want to get a sister a shout out, Queen Sarah. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you. For